Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, as you can see by what's on the screen, I've got a new build project coming up. I'm going to start on this weekend. It is the Tamiya 4 GT. This is the road version, not the race car. Ravel did the race version. Um, I will be using some aftermarket items with it. On the right of your screen, you can see I have the Hobby Design uh, Photo Etch set. Also on the left is a set of rims and uh, 3D printed brakes from Scale Production. These are actually for the YSOC uh, Porsche 918. Um, I'm going to use them on this car. I'd really like to use the BBS uh, F, uh, FIRs, which are the ones that are actually on the Ford GT race car, but I haven't found a set yet. And if I find some or can get some made by sh on Shapeways or something, then I'll probably swap out from these. But for now, we're going to go with the, the Scale Production BBS wheels. Um, I've already built one of these kits, so I know what to expect. Um, it's a beautiful kit. It comes up perfect um, for anybody who's looking at building one. Um, the only real drawback to this kit, which some people have a problem with, I personally don't, is that it does not have a full engine. It just has the top part of the engine um, that you can see through the rear glass. It really doesn't matter once the car is built. It's such a small area through that rear glass you can't tell anyway. So for me, it's not a problem. Other people, they don't like it. They think it should have an engine underneath it, and it would be nice if it did. But it's not a it's not a deal breaker for me. Um, to me, it did make up for it in other areas. Uh, for example, the headlights. Each headlight um, consists of 12 individual pieces, including decals. So that's 24 individual parts just for the headlights. Um, they're beautiful once built. Um, absolutely stunning. So to me, that makes up for some of the, the loss of some of the engine parts that you would never see anyway once the car is built. All right, so I'm going to go right into uh, some of the parts bags as a little bit of a review before I start building on the weekend. So first up, we have the tires. Um, they're just plain black rubber, no printing on the side walls, which is too bad. Um, they do have really, really nice tread detail. I'm sorry if I can't get a good shot. I don't want to open bags and lose anything uh, simply because I'm not going to be starting this for a couple days. But they're beautiful tires, as always with Tamiya. Tamiya stuff is pretty much perfect every time. Next up we have the chrome package, or the chrome trees, pardon me. This is the entire chrome on this car. Most cars have a ton of chrome pieces. This thing literally has nine pieces of chrome. Um, this is the oil reservoir, which is the only piece I'm actually going to be using since I'm using aftermarket wheels. These rims and the center caps, which are on this side here, I'm not going to be using. Next up, we have the glass, and as always with Tamiya, it is crystal clear, perfect, and it's obviously in a bag like they everything they do. Um, there isn't anything uh, wrong with any of this glass. It's just always perfect. Um, the one thing that Tamiya did, and I, I didn't really like, is that these here pieces here are all the vents on the car and what Tamiya did was they have a decal that goes over the glass to replicate the honeycomb shape for those um, for those vents on um, you actually can't see it on the car but they're here and then little one in the back here and then some on the back bumper um, anyways the hobby design photo etch set will we'll replace those obviously Next up we have the chassis and interior assist parts. Um, as you can see here, this is the engine here, and it's literally like four parts. One, two, three, four, and then the chrome oil tank, which goes on up here. Sorry for the glare. Um, once Again, once built, you'll never see any of it. It just sits on top of the rear suspension um, cross member, and it's it's completely irrelevant that there's no engine there other than the fact that you when you build it you'll know it's not there <clears throat> next up is the white body parts this is the main body or the main parts that go on to the bar sorry this is the parts that go on to the main body and this is the interior tub here uh, this is a really really nicely done there's almost no mold lines anywhere it's beautiful I love this kit 
Um, the only issue you might have to be careful of is this little spot right here where it attaches on the bottom of the uh, quarter panel where it meets the rocker. There's this little attachment point. If you don't get it cleaned off properly, it can cause problems once you get to paint. Same with this one up here. Uh, this is the flying buttress. So when you paint the car, you actually need to leave these two parts off so that you can paint the backside, which I'm going to show you right now. This is the backside. This is actually exposed on the real car. So this is body color, this inside uh, inside of the edge of the buttress here. So you have to make sure you leave these off uh, during assembly or painting, pardon me. Otherwise, you'll never, ever get paint in here and clear coat without making a mess. Next up, we have the chassis pan and the rest of the interior and uh, body accents, headlight buckets, uh, sorry, headlight buckets, the grills. A lot of this will be replaced actually with the photo etch set from Hobby Design. Um, and then in the, in, it actually has the rear fins are actually done in photo etch too. I'm not sure if I'm going to remove them and do it because the Tamiya ones are so thin already. Uh, it might just make a mess. Uh, top, sorry top of the dashboards here as well so anyway this is this is done in black most of this gets painted black anyway so it's really not a big deal that it's not done in white i like the fact that the body's done in white so it makes it a lot easier if you want to paint a lighter a lighter colored car than trying to cover up black plastic with white paint <clears throat> sorry about that um here's the decal sheets and you've got four decal uh, color choices. Again, sorry for the glare, I really don't want to open anything up. We have white, red, this is actually a silver, and then black. And then this is the uh, window maskings, your mirrors, uh, rear view mirror, and the other decal sheet that I can't really show right now because it's upside down. This is actually the sh decal sheet that has the other fine minor details as well as uh, the honeycomb grills that go on to those clear parts, which obviously I won't be using. Lastly, and I haven't even taken it out of the box yet, as you can see, is the body. And what Tamiya did with this kit, and I've never seen it before, is they actually stapled it to the inside of the box to keep this from moving around during shipping, which is kind of nice. That way it doesn't get jammed into a corner and crushed. It stays in one spot. And I'm gonna pop it out of that box right now. <clears throat> And as you can see, this is the main body for the uh, Ford GT, the teardrop shape. And you can pretty much attach all the pieces to this except for the rear quarters, which go here, the flying buttresses. You don't want to attach those again so that you can get paint on this surface here, as well as the inside of the buttress, which is right where my finger is up underneath there. And here you can see the little sl uh, slits in the back. This is where those little uh, glass or plastic vents go with the honeycomb decals on it. All right, and that is it for now. Oh, I guess I could show you the instructions. Um, typical to me, quality, black and white, which is fine, but I mean, everything is laid out perfectly, how to do it, um, how to assemble. Obviously, I highly suggest assembling much of the body parts before paint, um, other than these two pieces here. The flying buttresses the rest of the car you can actually assemble um rear bumper front bumper um these side pods here can actually be attached to the car these are the uh, inner uh, side pods for the rear wheel wells they can be attached to the car uh, with no problems um, the only thing you don't want to do is attach these two pieces sorry for the bad uh, photography here this is the uh, these are the two buttress pieces here the quarter quarter panels with the flying buttress and you don't want to attach those until after you've primed painted and cleared the rest of the car and then you attach those in during final assembly and I'll just go quick look through it and here's the headlights details I was telling you about this is the headlight right here this whole section here that's 12 individual pieces per headlight including the decals and the course and the uh, glass um, uh, headlight lens and on the back some quick pictures of the uh, de decal application uh, there's not very many decals on the car you got one for each of your center caps uh, Ford for here and then your stripes and on the back if you want to use the Ford license plate and a little GT badge it's literally 
six decals that you would really need to use on the car. Um, you don't even have to use the stripes, obviously. And that's going to be it, guys. I will uh, start building this this weekend, I'm hoping, depending on the weather, of course. Uh, I've got some yard work to do, but hopefully we'll get some time on the bench and we'll get uh, this beautiful kit started for you. All right, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the weekend.